All right, day two here at Commercial UAV Expo. I'm excited to see more of the vendors here on the exhibit floor. Let's grab our coffee and head inside the hall. Hoping to meet some amazing people that are working on incredible technology for the surveying and mapping industry. Particularly, I want to see more software. I want to see what capabilities exist, what people have worked on, and how us surveyors can benefit from geospatial softwares for drone mapping and other types of reality capture. So, looking forward to meeting a lot of incredible people. So I'm here with Christian from Vertical Aspect, and today we're gonna to take a look at TerraSolid. Yeah, TerraSolid is a geospatial processing suite. Uh, allows you to do different LiDAR classification, vectorization, a lot of different automated routines for different types of work, electric utility, land development, transportation type projects. Depending on what your deliverables are, if they're raster-based deliverables, DEMs, or you're doing vector-based deliverables, there's tools in there that allow us to automate a lot of those processes once we've kind of subdivided that data up into different classification. For example, if we want to do diameter breast height, which is a common deliverable for uh, trees, we can uh, use a TerraSolid to automate that and extract those out, and we can export those metrics out. Uh, TerraSolid has a drone processing wizard that allows us to simplify the whole process. We just bring in the point cloud, we bring in the trajectory information, and we hit go and we'll go ahead and do that base process. And all of that's been built into a really simple wizard to get to those base steps that are necessary to do anything else beyond that. Right. Cool, awesome. So. A couple of weeks ago, Wingtra announced a brand new drone, the Wingtra Ray, and they have it here today, and I'm excited to learn more about what this drone has to offer. Yusin, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. Good. Tell nice us more about you. Wingtra Ray. Yeah, so this is the new Wingtra Ray. Uh, this is a future-built drone, right? It's, it's built, we took a lot of the suggestions from the Gen 2 and realized the Gen 2 leaves a lot to be desired, uh, and there's a lot of new regulations coming in the future, and so we built a drone purpose-built for those new regulations for Part 108, and this is it. So the big, the big improvements, first, as requested by everyone, we've got collision avoidance, little radar in the nose cone. She actually flips upside down and goes back the way she came because she knows, hey, that's the only way that's clear. The easy way to get the payload in and out. Instead of the four screws, it's just one little switch. Just put her right in, turn this, and you're good to go. Last huge improvement is it's now CAT3 certified. So flights over people or ops over people, we, we now have a parachute for it. Those are really the big things. I mean, it's still a surveying and mapping drone. We're gonna do about 1,300 acres in the 57 minutes. It's a variable speed drone, so if we're going for efficiency, she's flying at 30, 37 miles an hour. If we're just trying to get something done quick and fast, she's gonna speed up to about 50 miles an hour. So it makes those shorter areas even more efficient to collect. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Ray in a nutshell. Uh, Pix4D, we do a lot. Um, most importantly, we do the most efficient thing in photogrammetry on survey. We have the software that will make everything more efficient. Your job, what your business outcomes are, how you want to make your clients happy. We are the processing tool, the leader in processing photogrammetry. Travis from Pix4D, talking about our partners over there at the survey school. Best thing about them, they are passionate about education getting our software in the hands of people that are gonna hit the workforce with the best software to make them successful one day. That's the place to be because they're gonna get you ready to hit the ground running. Pix 4D. So we're gonna head over to the round table discussion for drone survey standards. I think it's gonna be a great discussion for everyone, especially for us in the school, since we have a lot of drone pilots. And we're gonna talk about what we consider to be high accuracy drone mapping, what criteria should be met, and what the future of the industry looks like. The question was, if we have drone pilots, that are operating in the world of drone surveying and you want to climb up the learning curve little by little to know about the surveying technology <laughs> and surveying lingo. Uh, 
uh, are those conferences like similar to the Commercial EV Expo and other conferences are the right venue for the two communities that operate in the drone surveying industry, the pilots as well as the surveyors, can they communicate, can they share knowledge, could we hold sessions to train the drone pilots to learn about surveying? What's your input on the side? In the old school, it's a difficulty. On the younger generation, okay, it's absolutely an easy thing to do because they're already in it, okay. But what we're finding is that by interacting, the more that we interact together, the easier that, that, that things start to change. At Clemson University, we're seeing a much higher rate of people now coming in and saying, where is the, the drone education portion of, of the geomatics industries? Okay. So they're demanding now that that's being applied. So I would say encourage the cross-pollination. And to do that, you do it by these kinds of venues. I'm, I'm on my way out. Okay? So I want to pass on this knowledge to you guys. So, and I've seen, I've seen your stuff with your social media and the stuff that you're doing over there in Michigan. And, and then the, like, the stuff that you're doing with academia, you in the consulting world. But every, at the end of the day, and this is a regulatory issue, right? The old guard and the new guard. You know? And, but it, it's always good. It, it's, there's always an evolution. Like you were talking about, we're at that 10-year mark or 15-year mark. It's time. And I think that to answer your question is the more that we interact together, the better off we the more that we have social media, the more that we do this in a positive sort of way, it will transition our, our industry. The biggest thing that's going to lead us to the next generation of drone pilots that understand surveying, surveyors that understand reality capture and geospatial technology is a community. Right. For us, a community is where you can come, share what you're strong in, you know, ask questions for areas that you want to improve in, where you can learn from, and uh, everyone's got strengths and weaknesses in different areas, right? I just sat on a table previous to this one. I listened the whole time because I knew nothing about the regulations when it came to federal restrictions. I just, I just don't fly enough to face these problems. So clearly there are more people in this room that know about other topics and I'm never going to be able to know it. So when you have a community, a place that you can all go to, and a university is a good starting point. Unfortunately, I feel like universities struggle with maintaining yes. and you know transferring information and the lack of, I would say, doctors that are being made. Dr. Mustafa can definitely attest to this. The lack of doctors being made to help lead the next generation of educators, to help teach the next generation of professionals is also a big issue. So it doesn't just stem here in the professional world, it's in the academic world too. And if there was just a community where you can go to, you can talk to people, you get mentorship, just like Orlando has, that creates more passion and that's what helps the industry. I'm very passionate, that's why I make videos on YouTube about it, you know. But it raises an interesting question. Is every single cartographic product a legal product? My degree is in forestry, right? So we used to go to the local courthouse to get the tax maps. When they were, I don't know if you know what a blue line map is. Right. Mm -hmm. It's where they overlay the parcel lines, right? So does that same level of restriction carry all the way down to, to those guys? How is that any different than me overlaying lines on a, a drone photograph that I took versus them overlaying them on a, an aerial photograph they got from somewhere? Where do you draw the line, right? Between me flying with a drone. No pun intended, right? Eh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's almost like the, the surveying board or surveying groups are old school mafia. They don't want to let up any of that control. It seems like they're a little afraid of the technology and don't want to accept it because they're not going out and getting trained on the drones as, as, as uh, quickly as like independent guys are that are not surveyors, right? If they use it for anything that is design, they run the risk of someone saying, where do you get the, that information from? So then what happens when you have a company that hires a subcontractor to map a certain field that they're going to go build a building on, but they're just taking the data that that person's captured, and then they will certify it. It's not geo-reference, it's nothing. It's just a map. Yeah, but you see, it's like that's... when you have a contract and you're a lawyer and I say, okay, please validate this contract to make sure I'm not breaking the law. Then as a lawyer, you review it and you say, yep, you're good. Then that's the stamp of approval, right? Capturing the data is, is one thing and signing on the final product 
it's a completely different issue, right? Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have found any successful applications, actual AI that actually does work. I'm just curious what everyone's been up to with it. Yeah. Centra AI, and basically you have to teach it, how, you know, everything about your business, everything about your company. I guess each employee or each part of it is very specialized, so you'll have one specifically for data, and it'll only handle data, and, give you, and spit out data, spit out oh, I need to do X, Y, Z, and then it'll give you, okay, this is how you do it, and these are the numbers that you should be getting roughly, right? Or you have one that's strictly for business management, or you have one for social media, one for marketing, one for, you know, so it has all these different little modules that are very specific to that need. Yeah, so I use uh, LP360, uh, it's a GOP product, they did just come out with the AI ground uh, classification. Uh, I did purchase it. It definitely helps, you know, especially on really large data sets to really uh, speed you up. But, uh, they just released it a couple months ago. DGI Terra, um, the, I guess the ground point classification, uh, and using that to generate like the digital surface models for clients. I mean, I haven't done much uh, like commercial work, but the one uh, commercial job that I did was uh, in Wadley, Alabama, and they were hiring me to do a photogrammetry scan of the whole quarry mine, and they were gonna use uh, the elevation model that I got them. Primarily just using like the AI tools that is built into like the major um, photogrammetry software like Pix4D and DGI Terra. Yeah, we were working with a client last semester, flying some LiDAR missions and then using AI to do some feature extractions of trees and try to do biomass estimation, but that failed spectacularly. Um, because Part of the research process. <laughs> exactly. I uh, just have to justify that one. I mean, like what you said, right, the AI is only as good as how you train it. So when you're using AI and machine learning to try to do feature extraction, if you don't use like a proper signature file to train the AI to identify the trees that are in the area, then it's not going to give you output of trees being your feature. That is also a challenge, right? Everyone is saying AI is great, but one, you really need to know how the AI tool works, and two, you really need to spend time training the AI so you can get good output, and three, you need to have a good basic foundation so you know to identify those errors when the AI gives you errors, rather than just blindly saying, here's what the AI gave me, and you give that to the client. All right, so hopefully you guys had a good roundtable discussion. Absolutely. That was awesome. It was really good. So now let's go grab dinner and enjoy the rest of the night. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you come back tomorrow for day three of commercial UAV Expo. All right, let's see you guys.